I'm thinking about going bicycling. I really should get out today. And then I was just like, screw it, I'm going out for a ride. Hey guys, bike blogger here. On the Katy Trail right now. I'm in Tree Lore, Missouri. This is the uh, trailhead. Um, I'm gonna ride from Tree Lore to McKinrick, Missouri. It's about 16 miles that way, 16 miles back. It is currently, let's see what time it is. I think it's like five something, it's about 5.40 p.m. Uh, it might be getting dark by the time I finish with this, so I brought my flashlight just in case. Uh, so right now I'm uh, in Tree Lore, Missouri, and uh, this is my uh, GMC Denali road bike. It's a, uh, it's a multi-speed bike. It's uh, my gravel bike, a cheapo bike. Um, <clears throat> this bike is, uh, it cost me like 160 bucks off the internet. It sort of got me back into bicycling. Uh, very heavy bike, it's like 33 uh, pounds. Um, hopefully I don't get a flat. I got some puncture resistant tires I put on this uh, bicycle, or tubes. I think the tires are stock actually. Um, so yeah, let's get going. This is going to take a little while, probably a couple hours. Uh, back that way is uh, Dutzo, Missouri. Uh, I rode that another time, but we're going this way today. Uh, oh yeah, you probably saw the map here, but... So, we're right here. I'm going to take the trail to McKendrick, as I said. Um, and I've already come from this way down the uh, Katy Trail before. I've actually come from the far east side of the Katy Trail and have come all the way to this point in uh, Tree Lore, Missouri. Uh, so I'm gonna take this to McKendrick today. So let's get going. <clears throat> I have not ridden this bike in a while. Hopefully it, uh, hopefully it does me well. Okay, getting used to this bike. Unfortunately, I can already tell the uh, the saddle is too low. I'm used to riding a higher saddle height now. Uh, so, hopefully it doesn't mess up my knees. Unfortunately, I do not have a uh, Allen key uh, hex wrench with me so I can't raise or lower the saddle. I'm sort of stuck like this. I don't know why it's so low. Uh, I don't think I would have purposely lowered it for any reason. I think I just... When I started bicycling, I think I... Uh, I just like the saddle lower, sort of like a mountain bike or something. Alright, so we're going to be averaging probably uh, about 30, well not 30, well we're going to be going about 32 miles round trip here, but we'll probably be averaging about 15 miles per hour. As long as we do not have a flat tire. Hopefully we do not because I have a bad uh, habit of never bringing spare tires with me. Yeah, I so wish uh, I so wish I had uh, raised the saddle height on this bike. I have no idea why it's so low. Jeez. <laughs> uh, so we've gone a little over, uh, a little over half a mile. Some more about my bike. This is the, uh, like I said already, the GMC Denali. 
It uh, cost me only 160 bucks online. Got me back into bicycling. This is actually my first road bike. Technically, it's a road bike. According to the manufacturer, at least. It's, uh, it's expensive now, though. I mean, if you wanted to buy this bike new online, I'm not sure what they changed at all with the components. I doubt the shifters and everything are any better quality. But it's like a hundred or it's like two hundred and fifty dollars now. I have no idea why that is. It's not I'm not necessarily certain it's worth that much money. I use it as my quote unquote gravel bike, at least right now, because my other bike that's probably suited pretty well for gravel is uh my bad weather bike, my rain bike, my snow and ice bike, my bike with the fenders. And I didn't want to get it really dirty. So this is my El Cheapo bike. I just used for weekend rides. Although I haven't been riding on this bike for quite a while. Hence why the saddle is so low, I guess. Jeez. I right, got a mile now. Um, yeah, this video is gonna be pretty long. I don't know if I'm gonna upload the whole thing. I might just upload certain segments. I don't wanna bore you guys too much. <laughs> um, so let's see more about this bike. I like the colors. It's a yellow frame with a little bit of black on it. I nickname it the uh, bulldozer bike. It just crushes little stones in the pebbles. Riding along on the gravel trails. Hence its color though, I should probably call it the, the hornet or something because it's sort of like a, a bee. A bee color is yellow and black. So, this trail I'm on, the Katy Trail, it's a really good trail, especially for beginners, I'd say, and endurance riders, because uh, it just goes on and on. I mean, it is well over 200 miles long across the state of Missouri, uh, and it's mostly flat, at least on the eastern half of the uh, trail, from what I've read. And like I've said, I've... Uh, I've ridden from the far east section of the trail uh, up to, well, I'm going up to McKendrick today, so I'm not sure how many miles that is, but I've ridden all the way to the far east side from here and back, so round trip. Um, it's, you know, it's a, it's a really fun, long trail. Uh, not a ton of variety. There are some sections that are pretty neat though, like around uh, Weldon Spring, Missouri. That's back quite a ways east from here. Uh, but uh, this is a great place to just ride during the weekend, not having to worry about traffic or uh, stop signs, stop lights, all that stuff. And uh, especially if you're out here like where I am, in these small towns in Missouri, it's uh, pretty darn quiet. I don't know if I'm gonna see any bikes today. It, is, it does feel wonderful out though. It's like 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, today is Easter Sunday afternoon, April 5th, 2015. Got a pretty low gear going right now, so I'm getting a, a spinning a little fast here. Makes it easier to go. Ah. Um, and more about this bike. I don't have any bar tape on this bike. Uh, this was back when I was getting back into bicycling. After well over 10, 15 years, 
I didn't know anything about road bikes or bar tapering, that sort of stuff, because I rode a, a mountain bike as a kid with just uh, rubber grips on the handlebars. But uh, I've gone pretty cheap on this bike. I don't even have, like I said, I don't have bar tape. I just, I just taped the uh, handlebars with uh, electrical tape, so it looks really, <laughs> really El Cheapo. I have a an animal back there. I have a, commuted with this bicycle uh, a handful of times, but uh, I personally actually do not feel that safe on the road with this bike. It is uh, um, the componentry is just so cheap. I just would worry about something breaking on me while riding on the road. I I do not actually have that much <laughs> faith or. Uh, trust in this bike for that purpose however this has been an amazing reliable hope I don't jinx myself bicycle for just riding during the weekends on a trail like this you know I'm going at a steady pace I'm going 14.6 14.8 miles per hour and I do not have to worry about getting a flat tire because I got the thorn resistant tire tubes in and uh actually just have my the regular stock tires the tires on this bike are like a 35 millimeter wide so the nice cushy tires you do not need a uh, mountain bike on a gravel trail like this i could go even skinnier probably there's just some rough patches like right around here um i'm happy the road is not or this bike path is not a really muddy though because it has been raining uh, so the reason why this bike path even exists uh, you know you probably wonder like well how in the world can anybody afford to build something like this well I think there were federal grants and whatnot but you just think about property rights and stuff like that, but it's one of the quote-unquote rails to trails deal. This used to be a railroad track for trains, which I don't know, I guess they didn't need it anymore. And they sold it to the government, and the government made a, uh, a bicycle trail out of it, so that's awesome. It's one of the longest in the country, I think. United States uh, like I said there's not a lot of variety to it but it's really easy going flat and uh, just a great weekend sort of deal I think at least to continue this far from where I've gone so far on this 200 plus mile trail I actually had to drive out here it took me over an hour to get to the next trailhead where I left off and then it takes me you know it's gonna take me here a couple hours to do a round trip to the next major trailhead I want at uh, Marth, uh, McKendrick Missouri and to get back to Trelor Missouri and uh, and then it'll take me another hour plus hour and a half to get back home by car so we're talking a good half day so it's beginning to be less uh, uh, optimal, less uh, um, practical for me to do this during the weekend. So I don't think I'm going to be able to go much further along this trail without actually making a, a vacation or a weekend trip out of it or something and staying overnight or camping or something. Okay, got across the road here. Okay. Um, I think I'm sort of getting used to this lower saddle height. I wish it was higher though. I got my flashlight up front here in case it does get dark before I get back. Since it, w since it was about six o'clock when I left from that trailhead, or it is about six o'clock now, I think the sun is gonna set in the next hour and a half. So the last half hour might be getting a little dark out here especially since there aren't any street lights or anything since it's out in the country 
there's there's a really neat highway called highway 94 that i took to get to here it's really popular the scenic route country road a lot of motorcyclists like to ride on it it's uh there's a bunch of wineries along the way uh and uh I think it'd be awesome to bicycle on, except, I don't know, people go sort of fast, mixed with all the wineries, you know, drunk drivers, whatnot, tight curves. Again, it'd be fun to bicycle on, but I don't know if I'd feel safe riding on a country road like that. Maybe someday I'll try it, but... <sighs> Crossing the bridge here, there's a river to my left. I believe the river to my left is the uh, Missouri River. <clears throat> oh. So yeah, let's see. What are they doing over there? Tearing something up over there. Blasting away. Anyway, um, more about my bike. Uh, it's got gripped grip shifters. By that I mean you sort of like just grip. They're like mountain biking shifters basically. You turn it, you throttle it to change gears. And it's on a road bike, which is weird. What they actually have to do with this bicycle frame to do that is I think they uh, let's see, okay, across the road. What I think they do to do that is uh, they uh, chop the handlebars in half and then weld it back, weld it on there, and put it back together. It's it's really stupid. I don't know why they do that. I guess they have extra parts in the factory in China or whatever. And they just sort of build bikes out of it. spare parts from other things or something. That's where this bike came from. It gets its name GNC GMC Denali because that's actually a I think it's a luxury SUV. And I think the story goes that supposedly when you would buy one of those SUVs, they'd actually give you a free bike along with it. And that's where its name comes from. Anyway, there's nothing special about this bike component-wise. I think it does have a, at least a partially uh, Shimano drivetrain, derailers, low quality, but I mean, you know, some people can't afford the fancy stuff, so that's not, I don't know if that. If you can afford something better, I would, I would get something better. You gotta start somewhere and this is where I started. And as you can tell I'm still still didn't junk the bike. I still have it lying around and I'm still riding it. So I have a lot of miles on this bike. Uh, I'm not sure exactly I don't know if I can check my computer. Let's see here. This computer is is also junk. I put all my nice stuff on all my other nicer bikes. Uh, average speed so far is 13.6. Max speed so far is 16.3. We've gone four miles. About 17, 18 minutes. I think I got tape over the buttons and that's why it's not working. Oh well, screw it. Uh, this bike obviously has drop bars so I can get down low. Uh, it's just got regular rim brakes, no disc brakes, especially not in this price range. Um, 
got my nice flashlight up front here, the bright flashlight, so use that. Uh, got a water bottle. I drink some water here. Oh my, this video is going to be long. Um, let's see what else. It's got a three tra three chain rings up front and uh, multiple cogs in the back. I don't know exactly what the uh, ratios are, the range, but there's quite a big range. I think it's technically a 20 speed bike or something like that. So that'd be uh, three in the front. Let's see, seven in the back, I guess. It'd be 21 speed. I don't know. Let's see what else. This is a steel. Actually, the frame, I think, is aluminum, but the handlebars and the fork are TIG. That means steel. Uh, just basic steel. Uh, heaviest metal that they put on bicycles. I did briefly own a vintage bike, a Raleigh, uh, early 80s, I think. Uh, it weighed a couple pounds more than this bike, but the tubing was quite a bit thinner because the frame was actually steel, not aluminum like this bike. But like I said, with this bike, I did commute a little bit with it. So I actually wrapped some uh, reflective 3M tape around the frame and the uh, chain stays and whatnot, seat stays. So that's a, that's a good idea. I mean, if you're going to commute at night, you may want to think about doing that. I haven't done it with my nicer bikes, <laughs> but I did cover this bike in some reflective tape. It makes you more, uh, it makes you stand out more and uh, you know, you'd be less so likely to have a thieves be interested in your bike when it looks sort of not as pretty. Ah, going about five miles now. So, not quite halfway in this direction yet. Actually, nowhere near it. So we gotta go about 16 miles before we turn around. I'm only going five so far. Let's see what else. Actually, actually, I think I, I do have bar tape on this bike. It's just on the drops. Well, that's just weird. I don't have any bar tape on the, or maybe I do have bar tape on the, I think I do have bar tape on the top handlebars, but I covered it completely in uh, electrical tape on top of it. I think because it was starting to come off and, uh, I don't know, I was really cheap and uh, didn't buy extra bar tape. Didn't bother to replace it, I just covered it in electrical tape. <laughs> wow, this is the total, the total ghetto bike. I don't want to talk bad about this bike though. I love, I love this bike. It's been with me the last couple years. We've been through a lot together, 15.6 miles per hour. It's doing me really well right now too. One thing you really got to worry about on these trails is in the fall, when a bunch of stuff falls off the trees, there's a bunch of thorns or goat heads as they're called on the trail and those can really mess you up, give you a flat tire. I've heard uh, lots of horror stories about that, getting flat tires and being far away from anybody. Hope that never happens to me. Not trying to jinx myself today. Normally when I go on one of these rides on these trails, they just are pretty flat. Yeah, that's cool, the river over there. They're pretty flat and uh, not entirely interesting. Uh, I um, will just listen to music. But why don't we be quiet for a second here since there's nobody around and just enjoy the trail.
All right, I just upshifted. So I'm going a little faster, 17.6 miles per hour. Got a different saddle on this bike. It's a really cushy saddle. More cushy than pretty much any of my other saddles. I actually wouldn't really recommend a very cushy saddle on a long ride though. Cause uh, I don't know, the cushiness doesn't feel so cushy after a while. <clears throat> Let's see, anything else about this bicycle? Uh, I only replaced a couple things on this bike. I replaced the uh, brake pads because the brake pads were a hard compound, really crummy. So I replaced them with the nice soft compound Salmon colored uh, Cool Stop rim brake pads. And they're, they're really much nicer. I feel a lot safer with them. Uh, and then for whatever reason I was having issues, I can't remember what, with the front brake caliper. You know, the, the, uh, the braking mechanism, the arms. So I chucked that and I just bought some new ones uh, and they didn't quite fit. So I think I had to buy a, a 5 16 inch drill bit and drill a wider hole on the front mounting uh, part of the, I guess the fork. And, uh, and then it fit and I haven't had any issues since, so that's good. Otherwise, yeah, I haven't really replaced anything else on this bike. I mean, I, I got my clipless pedals on this bike. Shimano clipless system, SPD, big fan of that. There are a lot of other systems out there. I think most, uh, most bicyclists, I think, use the Shimano system. It's just so widely available. Works fine for me, so I'm quite used to it. It's a little difficult to go to a, a different clipless system once you're so used to something. Like if you wanted to go to Crank Brothers, Egg Beaters, or Look, Time, uh, or uh, there are a couple other ones I know. Just can't think of them right now. Gone 6.5 miles. I'm gonna downshift here. A little easier. <clears throat> so yeah, again, I'm heading from Trelor, Missouri to McKendrick, Missouri. The round trip mileage is about 32 miles, according to website online. I think it's uh, bikekatytrail.com. I think that's what it's called. If I ever watch this full video <laughs> or I uh, just remember, I'll try and post the link below in the description. But uh, I don't always get a chance to watch my videos after I record them. I mean, there's no way I'd be able to upload as many videos as I do, as often as I do, if I actually went and reviewed all of them in length. Uh, I just don't have that kind of time. I have a job. I, I have a personal life, you know? I can't spend that much time with it. However, it does help that a big chunk of my life is about bicycling. I love sharing my love of bicycling with you guys. So uh, if you like this video or other videos, thumbs up, like it, share it, comment and subscribe if you haven't already to my channel. Uh, there's a lot more bicycling videos. I have a bunch of playlists. Uh, I have it set up so it just uh, automatically a robot just uh, sorts them for me. I got them for uh, rain. Rainy bike rides, snowy bike rides, nighttime bike rides, trails like this, how to videos, tips, and all my bicycle commutes. 
so I don't advertise anywhere so if you found me I would be a little interested in how you found me I am getting more views on my videos so uh, I'm starting to uh, climb in the search rankings uh, so more people I think are just finding me that way uh, but yeah like I said I don't put ads on my videos I don't I don't plug my channel at least not yet <laughs> on any other websites I got my own website bikeblogger.com which is basically just a uh, uh, my main page for all my videos you can go in there and you can search my videos very much similar to the to the YouTube but I also have info on my bicycles or I'm trying to get more info on my bicycles up there since I do own multiple bicycles for multiple reasons I got nicknames for them I got uh, reasons for why I own them <laughs> gotta have an excuse to blow money on things that gets me to cars I got an semi L cheapo car uh, it's over 10 years old and I just recently had to drop three four hundred bucks on it to fix something and that's a whole nother bicycle right there so really the only reason I use a car is I don't know if I'm if I'm injured and I can't get to work uh, by bike for some reason or if it's on the weekend and I want to drive somewhere to ride my bike like here so so anyway in this country you sort of have to have a car though especially if you don't live in a big city and I do not live in a a big city 17 miles per hour here's some geese yeah I really wanted to get out today ah, geese I check behind me there's no one behind me shouldn't be swerving on the road here unless I'm sure no one's behind me. Bicycle is distracted by birds. Um, oh, anyway, I wanted to get out today because it looked like it was gonna look like it was gonna rain. Uh, the next couple days, actually, the next week here. And if the surface, what I'm riding on now, got wet, it'd be really muddy and not really rideable. I've tried it before and it does not work. So, I'm glad I got out today. It was sort of one of those things where I did on a whim. I, uh, I just sort of like, I ate some lunch, you know, and I was like, eh, I'm thinking about going bicycling. I really should get out today. And then I was just like, screw it, I'm going out for a ride. So I threw everything on, brought everything with me, including my water, which I should be drinking right now. And I got out here and started riding. And uh, I feel great now that I'm out here. I'm really happy I did. I was just a little worried. My excuse was gonna be, uh, well, it might be getting too dark soon. And I'm not gonna be able to do it, but I'm like, ah, eh, screw it. It'll probably just be sunset. I'll bring a flashlight with me in case. Extra water. Yeah. Extra uh, charging cable uh, for my phone. So, I think I'm fine. This is sort of just really fun a bunch of cattle over there see it I, I really don't want to stop my my bike and I don't know if you can really see with me turning like that 
animals, um, farm animals. But uh, this is really nice because I still have not seen another jogger or bicyclist or walker or anything yet. So I really have this to myself. So this is really nice. Well, I don't know if you know me, but if I've told you guys this before, but I really hate stopping once I get on my bike. So stopping to drink, take a leak, uh, eat something, uh, or stretch. I just like to keep going. I don't like to stop. I'm the same way when I go jogging. I don't want to stop. So, one mistake I made before coming out here is I did not stretch. I really should have stretched my leg muscles at least, my back too probably, before I start riding because I'm probably going to be really achy after this. Also because I don't really do longer rides like this very often. I've been waiting to do this ride for like a year now, waiting for the right temperature and everything it's like I said it's like 60 something degrees Fahrenheit it's not humid it's uh, not really hot or cold or rainy or wet or snowy icy it's like perfect weather although the clouds are getting a little dark hope it doesn't rain 16.4 miles per hour yeah I really 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 would suggest if you do bicycle if you don't already know this to stretch before you go for a ride. I'm not that old, late 20s, but I still need to stretch, at least to get my 100% capacity of uh, performance. So you younger guys and gals, I would suggest that you stretch before you go for a ride. It's, uh, it's just a good idea. You can do some searches online on, on different types of stretching to do. Uh, maybe I'll do a video sometime on that. I got a whole list of topics I try to keep uh, a list of, at least on my phone. So before I go out the door, I'm like, well, what am I gonna talk about today? Usually it is just off the top of my head. I just start blogging about something, but sometimes I have something in mind before I step out the door or what I'd like to talk about. Coming out here for this ride, I didn't really have anything to talk about except for my bike, which I haven't really introduced you guys to yet until now. And uh, the trail. And yet somehow I have, uh, let's see here, somehow I have been blabbing to myself and you guys for 38 minutes. I guess I'm a guy with a lot to say. I don't know. Gone nine miles. About two thirds of the way done going this direction. And we're going to turn around and go back. Yeah, and the other mistake I made before I left is I did not check my saddle height. I didn't see any reason why that would be an issue but I'm not getting my full efficiency because I'm not up high enough so I can't stretch my legs enough to really get a full a full good uh, rhythm going here and uh, I did do a couple things right before I left since I have not ridden this bike for a long time I'd suggest you do this too if you have a bike you haven't ridden for a while. Is I, you know, you just check the tires, make sure they still have air in them. They should still have some air in them unless there's a hole. And then pump up the tires to a uh, recommended proper pressure. And then I oiled my bicycle chain. Keep in mind I did all this really quickly uh, before I left because I wanted to get out here. I would have been really bummed though if something broke down on me here. Uh, 
or my bike just didn't work right for some reason. Ah, I hear a lot of animals over to my left, just past sort of a swampy area. Um, I would have been really bummed after driving over an hour to get out here and find out I have a flat tire or something I can't even get started. That was worrying me, but so far so good. No problems at all, except for the saddle. It should be higher. 15 miles per hour. So we'll see if, uh, depending on how fast I can keep this up, we'll see if I can get back before it gets dark. If not, there'll be a little bit of footage of me riding in the dark with my flashlight. So, and out in the middle of nowhere like here, it can be a little creepy. So, we'll just see how it goes, but I'm pretty confident there'll be some sunlight by the time I get back, so not that worried. I, it has sort of happened to me once where the last 15 minutes were pretty darn dark. I went on a hike in California last year and it was just a day long sort of thing or a half day long sort of thing wasn't that long although I don't do a lot of hiking and it was like the last 20 minutes and it was pitch black and I was in like a forest and uh, it was a little scary because <laughs> uh, I mean eventually your eyes will adjust and you know just like the animals and it's not so bad but uh, I didn't have a flashlight with me or anything, except I did have my, my phone, so I could use a little flashlight on that, so. Oh, crazy technology. There's an app for everything. There's a, a smartphone has a, I'm sure most of you people are not that old who watch my videos, Smartphone has a, f a flash camera in it, and you can uh, use the use an app to just keep the flash turned on, and it's like a flashlight. Then, 14 miles per hour. As people who live way out here, whoa! Oh my gracious! Ah, oh, that was close. I was turning around to look to see what city I just left. And uh, I think it was Gore or something, but not looking where I was going, I almost just, <laughs> almost just barreled into a, into a ditch. Thankfully I kept my cool, just kept a straight line and eased my way out of it. But that would have been sort of dangerous because that ditch was like, I don't know if the camera really can pick up depth very well. That ditch was like a good, good five feet deep just about. And who knows what was at the bottom of it, probably jagged rocks. I really would have gotten hurt there. Anyway, I was talking about, uh, yeah, there's people who live way out here. I don't know what they do. I guess they work at home or something. I guess you can get dial-up internet out here. But that is sort of the way of the of the Midwest. In the United States, some people do travel two, three hours one way, each way to work uh, five days a week. Some people do a lot of driving just to get to work. Whereas I, you know, I just, I live really close to my work and it just takes me like 20 minutes to get there by bicycle. So yeah, I, I really do like the country. I couldn't imagine commuting like that by car or truck every day. That would just, that'd be really depressing, I would think. I don't like the country that much. I do like I do like being out somewhere like here, but I do also like being in a little bit more urban setting. So my preference is to 
just come out somewhere like here on a weekend. Obviously real estate is cheaper out here though, as is land. So there are poorer people that uh, just do live out somewhere like here, but there are also, uh, there are also a lot of wealthy people who live out here just so they can buy up 20 acres of land or whatever. To be fair though, we're not that far from the interstate highway system. It just does feel like we're far away. So, it's nice, there's no, there's no noise out here. Like I said, this, this used to be a railroad track, so there's no uh, train noise anymore. And uh, we're far from any big highway, so there's no noise from that. Really just the noise of my voice. So startling the animals on the trail. <clears throat> I brought an extra camera battery with me just in case this one dies on me. But I think the battery life on this camera is like, this GoPro is like two, two and a half hours on the quality settings I use. So a single battery pack will probably be plenty. I don't do like I said, I don't do very long rides. The longest ride I've ever done is probably about 40 miles. That was along the Missouri, or the Mississippi River. I think they did that last year, the year before, I can't remember. I think it was maybe the year before last. I have a jogging background, but the furthest I've ever really jogged is a a half marathon or 13, 14, 15 miles without stopping. One time I was in a park in St. Louis County called Creevecourt Park and it was getting late. I got lost in a suburban subdivision. Eventually found my way out and it was getting dark and saw some deer and right as I was coming back it was just pitch black. I could not see anything and there were a lot of animal noises. I don't remember what time of year that was, but it was really pretty scary. So it just made me run faster. And eventually I got back to the parking lot. And I, of course I was like the last car there. So it all turned out all right. Like I was saying that, uh, that hike I was on last year, it was getting really dark and what I'd actually done is I climbed down a cliff. There's a, uh, there's a waterfall on the west coast called Almer Falls. It's in the Golden uh, National, oh shoot, I can't remember. It was around San Francisco, um, Marin County. And uh, I was worried I wouldn't be able to climb back up the cliff face. Uh, and I'd have to hike all the way along the beach to a campground and I might even have to spend the night and uh, borrow a, a tent or a sleeping bag from somebody or something. I was really worried, but I was able to get back up and uh, it all turned out all right. Okay. Totally alone. Katy Trail. Feels wonderful outside. Got this all to myself. I think one of the reasons why it's really, there's no one around right now, is uh, it's Easter Sunday, a holiday. It's a school night. Uh, so there's multiple reasons why I think it's just sort of quiet. Although there might be, a lot of the kids might be on spring break now, I don't know. Well, I've gone about 12 miles. So, a few more miles, and then we're gonna turn around here and go back. What's our time so far? 50 minutes, gone for 50 minutes. 
So yeah, it's taken us like an hour. Hour there, hour back. The sun will probably just be setting when I get back. So I probably didn't need this flashlight. I'm just glad I can do this ride now because I'm not sure if I was really going to do this during the summer, like in July or something. Because you got to throw on a bunch of sunscreen. You need twice as much water. And uh, it's just really hot. <laughs> looking around I am out here I need to uh oh, I really wish I had raised the saddle I don't know if you've ever if any of you have ever ridden on a bike with a saddle really low it's not a very fun thing this is Massey Creek I hate these things I'm gonna sneak between them see any cars. Let's go across here. Okay. It's getting more windy. There isn't a lot of cover right where I am right now. It's flat, open, and windy. It's getting darker too. I hope that's just the sun going down and not a storm moving in. I had to leave quickly so I uh, did not get a uh, rear light on my bicycle. I'd have to take it off a different bike. It's for a reason, I don't know what, I ha what happened to this light, but I came off or something. And uh, Anyway, I have a front light though, so I'm okay there. I am going up a slight incline, but I feel like I'm really slowing down. I hope I don't have a flat tire. So I'm, like, I'm about as far away from my car as I can be right now. Okay, 14.4 miles per hour gone 12 and a half miles I don't think the wheels on this bike are made of steel steel rims are not good they're uh, really slippery and uh, heavy and it's not good for braking with rim brakes like aluminum wheels or carbon wheels, I guess. Carbon wheels seem so stupid. Plastic wheels. They're really light, though. If I'm riding my bicycle, though, I want good quality components, and that means not using plastic brakes and plastic wheels, even though you can lose good weight there. Uh, I guess a lot of the pro athletes do use carbon wheels, but definitely not something to be using for commuting. It's not durable enough, although plastics technologies are getting better by the day. Although the plastic industry has been around forever, it seems like, before I was born for certain. Since the uh, 1900s, <laughs> well, that sounds like a long time ago. 1900s. Uh, 13 miles. See, right now I feel like I've gone just about a, a good distance, like I'm ready to go home. <laughs> this is about the length I, I go at. I don't usually go much further than this in one sitting. Definitely are today though.
It might just feel like I'm going a little slower because I'm, I'm hitting a head wind. Wind that is hitting my head. It's slowing me down. So maybe when I turn around, start heading east, I'll be going with the wind and it'll be a little easier. Riding against the wind is like climbing a hill. It doesn't feel as uh, rewarding when you get through it as it does getting to the top of a hill and then riding down a hill. But you shouldn't beat yourself up over it because I think I just hit a stick. That was all. Don't want my bike to be falling apart on me. Uh, riding against the wind is, uh, is just as much of a thing you should be proud of as a feat accomplishing, accomplishing as it is uh, climbing a steep hill. Because uh, riding, against, riding against the wind is no easy task. Uh, 13.5 miles per hour, or 13.5 miles, 14.5 miles per hour. I thought about switching my uh, my uh, bike computer to metric units just out of curiosity since basically only the United States uses the old English system everywhere else in the world they use metric system uh, but I'm so used to miles per hour rather than kilometers per hour I haven't changed it yet it also requires me to it's a hassle to do that. Take my computer off, re open up the settings menu, and yeah, I'm just making excuses. <laughs> it's not like when you're riding on a bike, you're ever really gonna go faster than the speed limit on the road. I mean, I guess it is possible if you're going down a hill. But generally speaking, you're not gonna be going faster or much faster than the speed limit, wherever you are. So it's not really that important just for your own personal curiosity because we humans like to know where we are where we're going how fast we're getting there as I've said before it sort of sort of gives us a, uh, a reference point as to where we exist in the universe at that point in time something something sort of unique about humans I guess I don't know if animals are the same way they think about where they are and how fast they're getting there and whatnot. Whoo! It drinks more water here. So I'm going to McKendrick, Missouri trailhead. I thought there were other trailheads along the way though. There might not be, or maybe there were, and I just was not paying attention. But uh, I think we just got a couple more miles to go here, and then we're going to turn around. <clears throat> so I wonder what's the longest bicycling video online it's got to be probably like 20 hours long or something this is definitely not going to be any record i hope with me talking though it keeps things a little interesting uh because it is interesting to watch someone ride a bike i think but for such a long period of time you need sort of like a narr a narrator or something to sort of keep you interested at least that's the way it is with me I like to listen to someone talk talking while riding a bicycle though is like talking while running you can't really go as fast because you're uh, using your breath to talk than to breathe <clears throat> Whew. 
I've, I've, I've read people say online that uh, bicycle helmets are stupid, there's no point to them. This would be a very good example of having a bike helmet though, because uh, if you're on a mountain bike or if you're on a trail like this, you're never going that fast. I'm only going 14 miles per hour, which is generally the safety crash rating of a, of a helmet, maybe 12 miles per hour. And uh, really it's to protect you from, if you fell down like one of these, one of these ditches like I almost did there a while back, and you happen to hit your head dead onto a rock, well, that's where a helmet would come into handy. I think. It's gotten pretty dark all of a sudden. See, the weather where I lived said there wasn't any real chance for rain today. But since I'm, I drove like an hour outside of town, there could be totally different weather out here. So, fighting the wind again, 12.8 miles per hour, got my shorts on, short sleeves, still feel really good, not very sweaty. Yeah, I was talking about bar tape earlier. Uh, I think I might put some bar tape on my Moto Beacon bike. All it has right now are rubber grip shift uh, grips. Rubber, rubber grip uh, grips on the handlebars. And they've been giving me calluses and blisters. Uh, probably because I'm squeezing on onto the grips too tightly. I'm not too worried about slipping or riding a bike on a semi-flat, uh, semi-smooth road. So I might try and remove the rubber grips and just replace it with bar tape. I've seen people do that online. Some people think it's crazy, it's stupid. I think I might just do it though because I like a cushy surface for my hands to rest on. I'm just so used to the cork bar tape. Uh, so we might give that a go sometime soon. I gotta first get the grips off. And the way you do that is you need to use something that, uh, like isopropyl alcohol, that will uh, evaporate and not leave a nasty residue. You know, something that you use to clean a rotor on a disc brake. Uh, to sort of get it loose and then use some sort of long thin object, I don't know, like a screwdriver or something to sort of pry it off. Take the mountain bike rubber grip off. And then like I said, I might just go to all bar tape for my riser bars. We'll see. I definitely can't keep those rubber grips though. I need to replace them with some foam grips or uh, just different rubber grips or something, but the ones that came stock, they just, they're messing up my hands. And I know I could probably get used to it, but I don't want to get used to it because I don't like it. So we'll be replacing those. Crossing the road here. Looks safe. Zoom. All right, we've gone 15. 0.3 miles Should just be about another mile here to the trailhead And then I go back You know 16 and 16 is 32 miles. And I think that's supposedly what the round trip is so Hopefully the thing online was right I think I might have just passed mile marker 100 I guess that's possible. Yeah, that's, I think that is right. I passed mile marker 100, but it, it, this isn't actually the 100th mile of the trail, because I think the trail goes east up to mile marker uh, 30 or 20 something. So 
I guess I could say I've now ridden like 75 miles of the 230 mile long trail, I don't know. So I've probably ridden almost a third, I guess, of the Katy Trail, uh, forward and back round trip after this without ever even taking a vacation or whatever on the trail just uh, driving from home and driving back all on the same day in the same afternoon at that <clears throat> this is my Easter Sunday weekend bicycle ride 14.6 miles still have not seen another bicyclist or anybody really on the trail seeing some cars go by on the road to the left occasionally the road keeps uh, coming and going though getting separated by the a farm or a river or something hopefully the Hopefully the wind will be going with me on the way back. I am getting a little bit of a crosswind though here, coming from the side. When you get crosswinds, that's when you really do not want to have deep wheel rims. I think in, in bicycle racing there's even rules against having too deep of bicycle rims. Because it can get really dangerous when the winds get fast. It could blow you over, cause a major accident. You can see some cars up ahead. I must be coming to the trailhead here. Hopefully this is it. This is a uh, McKendrick, Missouri. About 16 miles now. There you go, McKendrick. All right, turn around here. Get off the bike for a second. Whew. So there's the full trail. Let's see, you are here. Trail the tree lore. Trail the Portland. So that way is Portland through the tunnel there, it looks like. So there are uh, restrooms here. That's why I wanted to stop here since there's restrooms to the major trailhead here. All right, so we're going to go back now. Uh, there's points of interest for this little town. Could explore one day. Little city. I'll have to do that sometime. We got to get back now, though. Okay, let's go back to tree lore from McKendrick. Oh, my butt. My butt aches. Ah. All right, so that was 16 miles. Pretty much dead on 16 miles. So it'll be 32 round trip. So we're heading back now. The time is, we've been going for an hour and eight minutes. It is, uh, let's see, average speed has been 14 miles per hour, max has been 18. It is 6.45 and we're heading back from McKendrick to Trelor. All right, 6.45, I'll have to check the video to see when I started. I might have started at 5.45. 
I guess that makes sense. Or a little before than 5.30 because I've been going for an hour and 10 minutes about. So it's going to be another hour, hour plus till I get back, which means it could be about 8 o'clock, which means I will come up on sunset and I will be entering blue hour, also known as twilight. It'll be getting dark, especially in the woods. So it won't, it may not be pitch black, but it will be getting pretty dark here. So we're halfway done. And uh, my legs are getting a little tired. I'd say it's mainly my, my butt that's tired. I think when I got off my bike there for a second, my muscles really realized how fatigued they were getting. So I don't do these longer rides very often. I haven't really been checking the camera, but I certainly hope the camera is still going. Otherwise, I'll just pretend to myself it still is going and uh, keep talking. Another hour here. Whew. So, by the time I get back, it'll be like 8 o'clock. And uh, it'll take me another hour or so to get home. So I won't be home till about 9 p.m. at night, Sunday night here. Like I said, when I came here, I took sort of the scenic route on a highway called Highway 94. It is, uh, there are a bunch of wineries along that route in St. Charles County, especially in Augusta and uh, Defiance, Missouri. Also in Warren County. Uh, okay, I think my, I think my butt's getting situated again here. Uh, so yeah, we'll have to come back here, uh, another time maybe and continue from McKendrick to Portland. Wish I had this camera, uh, sooner, you know, before. You know, earlier, I wish I'd been doing these videos earlier because I have ridden along, like I said, the other good 70 miles or whatever of the trail. I don't have it on film. I do have a couple photos. Maybe I'll have to post those sometime. My past rides, but I think every time I've ridden this trail, I've ridden with this bicycle. So this is sort of almost my Katy trail bike. Looks safe. Cross the road, little country road. Uh, going home today though, I think I'm gonna take the interstate highway system. Might be a little bit more miles, but I actually think I feel a little safer on it than the windy country roads at night in the dark. Can't really see much of anything anyway in the dark. There's a neat ride out here though. A lot of farmland. Uh, ride isn't driving out here. But this has been an awesome bicycle ride for certain. Getting a little dark now though. Uh. <laughs> yeah, you can probably see my legs in the camera a little bit when I get down or just generally as they pop up. I don't know if you really can on this bike though since the saddle's so low. Or maybe that makes it worse, but you probably see I got hair on my legs. I'm not one of those guys that shaves his legs. I'm a 100% man. I keep my hairy legs. I let a bunch of dust and bugs get stuck in them. Because I'm just manly like that. 14.6 <laughs> uh, miles per hour. Just drink more water. When I'm done here, I'm going home and I have a I have a mission. I'm going to eat pizza. So that'll be tasty. I am a I am a uh, I'm a uh, a practicing 
dietary vegetarian, I guess. So there won't be any meat on my pizza or I'm sort of vegan as well. So I use the day of cheese, the dairy cheese knockoff. I cannot believe it's not cheese stuff. It's really tasty though. It's a little bit of acquired taste, but I like a lot. I do eat meat and dairy products, although rarely. Uh, I find dairy, I find that I'm slightly lactose intolerant. I find dairy messes up my nose and with 16.4 miles per hour, I think I am going with the wind a little. And uh, to be perfectly honest, I think most people are, are pretty well lactose intolerant. I think the uh, dairy industry, though, has made people think that, oh, people just get uh, the flu every year or sinus issues. I blame it on dairy. I think there's a conspiracy going on. And then meat. I occasionally eat meat, but meat's another tricky thing. I sort of feel like there's a little conspiracy going on with the, the meat industry and all the hormones and crap they put in the into beef and pork and uh, chicken and all that so I tend to avoid meat as well so to get my protein and cal calcium and all that you just got to eat some leafy greens it is difficult though to get the same concentration of your uh, essential minerals and vitamins and whatnot if you're gonna just eat plants because you gotta eat a lot of plants. At least a lot more than I think most people do, at least in the United States. Most people eat meat, lots of meat, lots of dairy, milk, cheese, butter. So anyway, that's enough of that. We've gone uh, 18.1 miles per hour. 18.1 miles, we're going 15 miles per hour. Fortunately, I haven't had to stop at all, except for I wanted to stop for a second in McKendrick before I turned around. I haven't had to stop in traffic, no cars or anything, because I haven't really been any cars out here. Okay, cross this. Going good, tires seem to be fine. No flats, really happy about that. Especially now that I'm, every second I'm getting closer back to Back to Tree Lord, Missouri, where my car is. I'm going to put this in my trails playlist. You'll see I haven't really ridden many trails uh, or filmed many trails. Uh, it's because I don't get around to doing that. I, most of my videos are commuting by bicycle in a, in a semi uh, urban, small sort of city or mid-sized city sort of setting. I think that's pretty darn interesting. Trails are really fun too, but as you can tell with this trail, oh, I forgot about that. There's a big, uh, big set of a crevasse back there. It wasn't on the side that I was coming from, but it was going this way. I didn't go, I wasn't going that fast, so I, Probably didn't really dent my rims, but that would have been really bad for a skinny road bike. Um, anyway, I already forgot what I was talking about. 15.4 miles per hour, 18.6 miles. Oh yeah, I don't have many trail videos, but uh, you know, it's just mostly, mostly this, which is really fun when you're just riding or riding with a friend, I totally recommend that for a place like, like here, a long flat trail, for, especially for beginners or the family. But uh, in terms of filming it, <laughs> it's not a lot to see. Although, I don't know, someone could probably use this as a training video, you know, just riding indoors, like for me tomorrow. It's supposed to be raining. And uh, I do ride in the rain, 
because uh, I have to get to work. But if it if it's really coming down and I have a choice, I'll try not to ride in the really bad stuff. It can be exciting though to do that occasionally. 15.8 miles per hour. Gone about 19 miles now. Yeah, maybe we'll call this a training video. If all my talking is uh, getting a little tiring after all this, you can always just mute it, put on your favorite music, and just come along for the ride. I won't get, uh, I won't get upset at you guys. <laughs> uh. I don't know, this might be a record though. The longest bicycle ride filmed and uploaded online with a guy talking to himself for two hours. That's what it's gonna be turned into, it seems like. Can't believe I have that much to talk about. <clears throat> Getting a little darker. I got my, uh, my sunglasses on, but I also, uh, expecting it to get dark, I brought my clear glasses with me too. So, if it starts getting too dark for the shades, I can switch to some clear sort of goggles. Still protect my eyes from dirt and bugs and stuff, but I can see clearly out them rather than the sunglasses in the dark woods. When I'm riding with my other glasses, since I have two pairs of glasses, I put them on my, uh, on my belt, just hanging on my belt. I've lost a pair that way before, but the ones I like that I wear all the time are really cheap, like four bucks a pop, four bucks a pair. And uh, even though I've lost a pair on the street before, as I've lost a, a rear light somehow, popped off. Wasn't that expensive, so I just replace it and be on my way. Nineteen point five miles. Feel like I'm going against the wind again. Must just be a crosswind, diagonal wind. I'm heading east on the Katy Trail from the Kendrick to Trelore, Missouri. The total distance between the two trailheads is 16 miles. So round trip, I got 32 miles. And I have gone about 20 miles so far. Over halfway there. Over halfway done. Total time is gonna be a little over two hours, I think. I did do another video where I had like a two hour plus or about a two hour long video until my battery died in the city park when it was uh, sort of icy and snowy. Uh, I don't think I had a, a microphone. I don't think I was talking very much on that, or maybe I was, I don't remember. It's been a while. In any case, this is the Katy Trail, Rail the Trails system, some 200 plus mile long system across the state of Missouri and the USA. If you live anywhere nearby here, and you're wondering what the Katy Trail is, well, this is it. This is the Katy Trail. It's just a long gravel trail. Pretty darn flat for the most part. And uh, generally quiet, especially out in these smaller towns. And you got the place to yourself. And you're in case, I guess that's a little town. I hear people always say that, you know, there are a lot of really neat, very pretty areas to go to in Europe, but I think the United States, North America, has a lot of very pretty areas. I think there's just something fun about going to a different part of the world and 
like again human beings as we are like to know where we are know our place in the world but uh if you live in the United States like I do I'd suggest you explore the national parks and stuff a lot of really neat areas Death Valley uh Yellowstone uh just a million seemingly parks just everywhere in fact this Katy Trail is considered a state park a Missouri State Park the, the trail the uh just the trail so I think it does supposedly have a curfew but you know what are you gonna do I'm trying to get back before it gets dark but I might not get all the way back here before it's it too dark but that's why I got a flashlight to be safe oh. a little over 20 miles now 14.4 miles per hour so instead of counting down here I got 12 miles to go about four miles outside of whoo, windy four miles outside of McKendrick Missouri heading east toward tree lure like I said I've been wanting to start hear a lot of animals now like I said I've been wanting to do this this ride for a while I don't know what that is to my right cornfield or something uh, I had this ride on my list for like a year now I wanted to go from tree lord to McKendrick but I knew it was a long ride 32 miles and it was a long drive to get out of here an hour 15 minutes or so each way so I had to make time for it I had to be in good health and I had to have my bike sort of tuned up but like I said I just sort of did it on a whim because that's the only way I was going to get around to it I think I just ran, ran out to the garage oiled the chain pumped up the tires threw it on my car and started driving out here that's the best way to do things sometimes just on a whim keeps things interesting Surprise yourself sometimes. Whew. A lot of pollen, all the stuff is starting to come up now. Springtime, nice weather, but that's a lot of stuff in the air. hydrated <clears throat> I got like a uh, 20 24 ounce water bottle I think that's enough to last me for a couple hours it's recommended that if you're gonna bicycle for like over two hours uh, that you bring something along with you food wise like an energy bar or something to replenish your all the energy you lost I didn't bring one because I'm not really going that long I'll get some dinner when I get home though 13.8 miles per hour 14 miles per hour I've gone 21 miles just keep counting it down 11 miles to go That's the stinky thing, is when I get back, uh, once I get back I'll have uh, tired legs and then I gotta drive back home. My legs are already tired, that sort of stinks. No one behind me. No one in front of me, dare I say, now that it's getting darker, 
I may not come across any bicyclists. When I arrived at the trailhead earlier here, uh, there was one car, but they pulled out and left the parking lot right when I came in. And then back at McKendrick there, I saw one car at the trailhead. Can't remember if there was a, a bike rack on the car. It probably was, but there was no one there. So they were out riding somewhere. I didn't see them coming from this way though, so they must have gone west toward Portland or it was an abandoned car or a, a bicyclist that got mugged and is lying on the trail somewhere back there or maybe they had a flat tire back there and I'm going the other direction so I can't find out about that and I can't help them. <laughs> oh man. I'd be pretty useless anyway though because I don't have any spare tires. I have a phone though. I carry my smartphone with me everywhere I go. Because uh, it's always good to have an emergency sort of thing with you. Bring water, bring a flashlight, bring a phone, bring some band aids. I do have all that sort of stuff with me now. But uh, I try to, keep, try to travel light. Uh, Yeah, if I had a flat tire, I'd just be hoofing it and I'd have about 10 miles to go here. It's quite a long way to walk. Considering uh, I'm bicycling 14, 15 miles per hour, if I were walking, I don't know what the average speed of a, of a walker is, and by walker I don't mean a zombie, but a walker like, uh, I don't know if it's like three miles per hour or something. So it'd take me five times longer to get wherever I was going. So if it was going to take me an hour to, to bicycle, if I had to walk my bike all the way back to the trailhead, I don't know if it'd take me like five hours. I guess if I was going really slow. Because that's another thing with a cell phone. Just because you got one doesn't mean it's going to work. Especially somewhere like way out here where they may not have any cell towers. Just got landlines. And you gotta find a a little town with a phone so you can get help. But at least this section of the trail, I think it's like a bit of a ways till the next town. I do pass some farmhouses though along the way, so you always try and ask for help there if you needed something. Luckily I haven't ever had to bother anybody though. Like I said, I don't do this very often, so. I'm totally not prepared. Just got my flashlight, my phone, and my uh, band-aids, and my camera. Documenting everything in case something goes all Blair Witch Project on me as I'm on my way back in the dark. 22 miles. 10 miles to go, 14.2 miles per hour. It's getting darker. I don't know how well video shows up on this camera when it starts getting sort of dim light. Which reminds me, I probably should turn my flashlight on soon because I don't know if the camera's gonna be able to pick much of this up. Especially once it gets really dark because uh, there's no street lights out here, so there's no ambient lighting. So, oh yeah, this is the, the ditch sort of area over here where I almost crashed. Now that I realize it, there's a ditch, but it actually goes down further. I was at almost actually at a 10, 12 foot drop into a creek. That could have been really dangerous. Anyway. Going 15 miles per hour. Say so I got all these gears on this bicycle. I only use one or two of them. And that is why 
I have only single speed bikes except for this bicycle. This is my only bike I got now that has multiple gears on it. <laughs> sort of for good reason though, it's so heavy. Bugs. I'm gonna get bit by mosquitoes and junk. Okay. 22.5 miles we've gone. 14.6 miles per hour. Sort of a cliff to my left. Goes up a ways. In a little while here, I'm gonna turn my flashlight on. Cause it's getting sort of dark. Although it's probably, it's not that dark yet. It's darker with my sunglasses on though. When it's overcast, you should have your lights on anyway, whether you're in a car or a bike or whatever. Uh, zigzagging a little. No one behind me still. The only way someone would be behind me now is if, uh, if they were going pretty darn fast, because I'm going 14 miles per hour. I could go probably upwards of 18 on this bike, but I'd be wearing myself out too quick. Gotta pace myself. It's fun riding this bike again, I haven't done it in a while. If I remember though, I need to, oh, I need to raise the bicycle saddle when I get home. It's too low messing up my legs or my knees one time when I was on this trail there was a big tree across the trail it was uh, blocking the way and there's actually multiple trees I think and there was someone trying to move them or I think he might have had a chainsaw or something I had to get off my bike carry it and jump over the tree like in a cyclocross race or something. Getting a little excited now. I'm getting closer to getting back here. 23 miles. Nine miles to go. Less than 10 miles to go here. Oh, looking to my left. Big, uh, big cliff going upwards. Big hill. Uh, so yeah. Getting a little tired now. My legs are, that is. Would be a little cool to I right, just left Gore, I think. City. Or town. Village, whatever. Would be cool to have a house right along this bicycle trail. But, uh, so far from the bigger city, I don't know. Definitely a weekend fun ride, though. One of the tricks to feeling comfortable on a bike is to stretch out and try to distribute your weight. Not too much on the handlebars, not too much on the saddle. It'll alleviate a little bit of pain on your butt and your hands. Also having good bar tape and comfy gloves help. Whew, across the bridge, this bridge looks sort of new. Do 14.6 miles per hour. Gone about 23.5 miles. I sort of feel like I've ridden this section of the trail before, but I don't think I have. Some of it just sort of all looks sort of the same. Neat big bridge here. 
crossing over a creek or a river or something here. Thirteen point eight miles per hour. Woo. Going against the wind again. Yeah, things are starting to get green, the grass. It's like all within less than a week, things went from really sort of a gray, brown sort of color to really start getting green. A lot of the trees haven't really got any big green leaves on them yet, but a lot of the lawns, a lot of landscaping everywhere, it's gotten quite green all of a sudden. Now that it's April. So yesterday was Saturday. I did not go for a bicycle ride yesterday. I'll admit to that. But the day before was Friday. It was raining, I think. I think I went for a ride then. Uh, try to ride at least five days out of the week. Gone about 24 miles now. Whew. Six miles to go. A little bit of junk on the trail, but generally speaking, that's pretty river. Generally speaking, the uh, the trail is pretty clean, at least right now. As we get more rain this month, I think sections of the trail are going to get flooded out and obviously will not be rideable. So I'm glad I'm getting this in now, sort of between the winter and the flood season here. Some years we've gotten a lot of rain. In downtown uh, St. Louis City, I've seen the Mississippi River just flood out a street going in front of the St. Louis Gateway Arch uh, National Park grounds, I think it's National Park. Uh, so that was sort of <laughs> interesting seeing seeing the stop sign almost completely submerged. So they have these big floodgates that they shut to try and protect some of the city from getting flooded because it is right along the Mississippi River. Very large river. Runs all the way from uh, the north part of the country down to Louisiana, I think. St. Louis is a confluence of two rivers, the Mississippi River and the Missouri River. And I'm not certain, don't quote me on this, but I think the Mississippi River is the widest, largest volume river in the country, the United States. And then the Missouri River is the longest river in the United States. I could be wrong though. But yeah, there's a confluence that is they combine in North St. Louis. So you got the combining of two major rivers of the country, of the continent, really, of North America. So that's really neat. 13.2 miles per hour. Gone 24.5 miles so far. Getting darker and uh, Riding on the gravel here is like, sort of feel like I'm riding on the moon. I don't think I see anyone behind me. Oh. Yeah, don't want to ride too far to the edge here. Trail, easily get hurt pretty quick.
that's one of the things I wish I'd known, you know, like, I wish I'd known, you know, before I started riding, that my whole ride would be by myself and no one around. I would have just uh, ridden right in the middle of the trail, right here. I have a tendency to ride to the right a little bit, just in case, uh, here in the geese again, just in case, uh, you know, someone was coming up behind me and they wanted to pass on the left. Because I'm just a courteous guy like that. Let's see, how long have we gone so far? Well, it's 7.20. Sunset is in about 10 minutes. And we've been going for an hour, 45 minutes. Trip distance so far is about 25 miles. We have about seven miles to go. Or no. Oh yeah. That's right, seven miles, okay. So the total is 32. So seven miles. I was wrong earlier thinking six miles and seven miles to go here. Whew, I just passed the 25 mile mark. I heard uh, geese around this section earlier. We're gonna turn our light on now. Let's see, it's as bright as it gets. One, two, all right, so that's a light. Doesn't seem that bright, does it? And it would if it was darker. Point it outward a little bit more. Heard a bug just hit my helmet. My legs are tired. 14.6 miles per hour. 25 miles so far. I'm gonna drink some more water. If you feel your mouth running dry, it means you waited too long. You should be drinking more water. That's what I should be doing. Drinking more water. Twenty-five point five miles. Dare I say, I am running out of things to talk about right now, or I'm just getting tired. I think I'm mainly just getting tired, or maybe I'm in the zone. I'm in the zone. I'm totally focused on going straight on a flat surface, easy going. Well, how about that? My uh, my battery died, so I did have to switch to the other battery, and I had to stop, which I don't like to do. Wow, it's uh, it's really quiet right now. Okay gone 25.6 miles so let's keep going about six or seven miles to go good thing I brought a spare battery I didn't think I'd really need it hopefully I got enough uh, disk space enough space on my uh, SD card I had a couple other videos on there I think would have deleted them if I had known I'd be Filling up the memory. It takes a lot of space. It takes a lot of battery life to record in 1080p. If you guys didn't know, all my videos are 1080p HD video. At least as good as the camera will make. Uh, 
as good of uh, encoding as it will make. Uh, obviously the quality degrades a little when you upload it though. Uh, but yeah, all my videos are in HD. So if you really wanted to, you could uh, switch the quality to HD or at least 720p. And uh, I don't know, some things might pop up a little better. Yeah, geez, I just hit a... Well, that's just really bad. I just hit like a... Potentially a thorn or something. Hope I don't, uh... <clears throat> hope I don't get a... Flat here. Been lucky so far. 26 miles. So, 6 miles to go. Almost back. Not much longer now. I've been, uh, my ride time, that is time in which I've been moving, moving time has been about an hour, 50 minutes. So, if I had to guess six miles at an average pace of 14 miles per hour, six is a little less than 14 miles hour so I'd say we'd be done here in the next 25 minutes or so maybe less maybe more we shall see yeah just still wearing my uh, sunglasses it's still not that dark so I don't think I need to switch to my clear glasses yet it's not like there's any traffic, so if there's anything you need to watch for. Ooh, it's a squirrel or something like that. Sort of riding right along adjacent to the river here. To my right, that is. To my left is just a cliff face that goes up, 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 up. So yeah, the battery died and I have to keep that in mind. These batteries don't last quite two hours, even in nice weather like this. I figure they wouldn't last as long in the cold, but uh, glad I brought a spare with me. I was thinking as I was running out the door. I love the bicycle, but uh, come up on the uh, 20 mile mark or 15 mile mark, I honestly, you know, it's not quite as fun. It's probably because I need to work on building up my endurance more, strengthen my muscles more. I do a lot of bicycling, but like I said, I do not do a lot of longer distance bicycling and by no means is 20 miles or whatever long distance Got a flashing light up there coming up on an intersection i guess the river Actually, I don't really know what that sign is. I saw it earlier too. There's something to do with something to do with boats or something. I don't know. It's really pretty out here, especially since I got it all to myself. Still, no one behind me, and no one in front of me. I I believe I was correct in that. Uh, not encountering a single individual while riding on this trail today. Funny thing is, like I said, I mean, there could be more people on this trail come summertime when it's actually not as nice weather-wise, but when more kids are off school and whatnot. On 27 miles, 
five miles to go. I've just been counting it down this whole video. I am getting a little sweaty now though. Going this long. That's the one thing about this chest strap. This camera chest strap is that it's uh it squeezes your chest a little bit, just enough that it's not too ridiculously wobbly, and thus it it presses your shirt up against your chest and uh you don't really have as many air pockets and thus it uh gets a little more sweaty uh, 14.6 miles per hour it's quiet Seen a couple of rodents here and there. Nothing big though, like deer or anything. Yeah, I use this bicycle totally just for riding on the gravel and basically just riding this trail. Hey, it's fun to mix it up. I like riding different bicycles, even if the bicycle is not really as higher quality as my other bikes. It can still be fun. Gotta give it some love too. Especially since it got me back into bicycling. I rode this bike for nearly a year before I got a much nicer bike. My rain bike, my diamond back Hanjo Comp. I bought the diamond back because I wanted to try multi-speed on a lighter, higher quality bicycle. And uh, it still did not interest me. So that was sort of a big, that was sort of a waste of money. And in that respect, however, because I switched to single speed, but then I sold the components, STI shifters, Shimano shifters, and brifters, whatever you want to call them, derailers and whatnot. So I got back some of my money, about 150 bucks maybe, I don't know. Going into the woods now, a little bit darker. So let's see, order of bicycles. Uh, when I was in college, I bought a very cheap department bike. Did not fit me, it was a mountain bike. And then I got this bike after college. Then I got a uh, my Hanjo Comp. And then uh, I got my Wabi. And then my Moto Beacon. And uh, somewhere in between there I got a, a mountain bike. I have one mountain biking video on my channel. Entering Bernheimer City or whatever. Uh, I have one mountain biking video and it is a pretty lame excuse for a mountain biking video, I'm sorry to say. It's just an attempt at mountain bike biking. It's a single speed. It's a nice steel mountain bike. It is a nice bike. It's a GT piece, and uh, I'm just not much of a mountain biker. I have no skills. So I rode around in Cliff Cave Park. It's a county park in the St. Louis County area. Uh, so I rode a couple of trails of that with that at the end of last year, around New Year's. And uh, yeah, that was just a mess up. I got a I gotta do a better mountain biking video sometime because that was uh the camera was sort of pointing down so the camera angle was not very good and it was pretty much a fail ride 
because I, I couldn't do really anything. I couldn't, I just rode the single track a little, or the double track a little bit. It was fun. It was very fun, you know, but the video wasn't that great. I feel a little bad about that, but hey, whatever. All right, we've gone 28 miles. About four more miles to go here. Going 13.8 miles per hour. Starting to see some lights turned on in some houses up there to my left. There are people who actually live out here. Whew. 15 miles per hour. The longest ride I've ridden on the, my longest mileage I've done on this trail is probably about 30 miles. So this is about one of the long, my longer or longest uh, bicycle rides on the Katy Trail, 32 miles, over two hours. Feel myself getting even more tired now. First it was my butt, then it was my legs. Now I think my my lungs are finally starting to get a little bit tired. It's getting pretty dark back here. Move the light up a little bit. I actually took off work tomorrow and Tuesday, so that's why I'm riding this late on a Sunday night. Oh, I won't be doing a commuting video until Wednesday. That's okay. It's going to be rainy this week, I think. No traffic. Cross right over here. Getting the drops for a second here. All right. Not a huge fan of the drops. See that house to my right? It's got stilts on it. It's to help protect it from flooding since it is right next to the river. Another little road here. Ugh. Okay. I think I'm still on the Katy Trail. It's getting late. I've gone uh, 29 miles, coming up on a bridge. I got a few miles to go, three miles to go. No one behind me, no one in front of me. This is Smith Creek, supposedly. It's a neat bridge, wooden bridge. Okay. I've read stories of people online who have uh, cycled this whole trail uh, at least one way, I think. You know, the whole 200 plus miles, 240 miles or whatever. In, uh, in one ride or in a day and a half or whatever. It is possible to do it. I don't think it's something I'll ever do. It's not on my bucket list. But uh, I suppose you could do that. I mean, I'm doing round trip here, 32 miles, you know, within a couple hours or so. So, 
of course this is, this is like the this would be like the first 30 miles on a very long journey not exactly for me there's a car coming up on a road here Might be the only road I need to really cross before I get back. See some car lights. See if I can get up to the road before the car gets up there without popping a tire. Okay. All right, crossed. There we go. Woo! Gone about 29.5 miles. About two and a half miles to go. There goes that car. Getting excited. It's quite an accomplishment. It feels really good when you do something like this and you follow it through a long bike ride or climbing a mountain, whatever it is. It feels, feels like a great accomplishment. I think it's good for you psychologically too. Got a little bit water left. I do have space for two water bottles on this bicycle, I think. And most of my bikes do. So if I ever one day wanted to go for a very long ride, I could. Very long in terms of uh, my distance riding. Now, there's some people who may commute round trip to work, like 25 miles. Props to you, man. Props to you. That's a lot. That's a long commute. I don't think I've ever really read any one who commuted more than 25 miles one way. That'd be ridiculous, though, I think. 50 miles round trip, but... 25 miles round trip is quite a lot, so. I don't even generally ride 25 miles a day. I ride closer to 20 miles a day. It's getting pretty dark. The lights, the flashlight actually is appearing brighter now to me. I just have my sunglasses on, that's why it didn't seem so bright. Whew. I think I sort of prefer, prefer the flat bars on this bike in terms of hand position. Ah. Cross the little driveway there, okay. Just past the 30 mile marker. Two miles to go. Going 14.4 miles per hour. It's two miles. Whew. So if you just skipped ahead in this video, I'm almost back, just got two miles to go. Uh, got my flashlight on now, obviously, because it's getting pretty dark. It's past sunset. It's probably going on uh, eight o'clock. Uh, yeah, I just got two miles to go. This is a total 32 mile long round trip ride here from Tree Lore, Missouri to McKendrick, back that way. And now I'm traveling from McKendrick back to Tree Lore Trailhead on the Katy Trail in, uh, in the state of Missouri, USA. Legs are pretty tired. Lungs are pretty much okay. I, I have pretty strong lungs and a pretty strong heart. I'm certain my butt's going to really ache once I get off this bike, though, and then I know my legs are aching right now. I think my legs would feel a little better if the saddle was a little higher. I know I said that earlier. I said it multiple times. Oh, hopefully I, 
watch some of this video later and I remember I gotta raise the saddle on this bike. It's too low. It's sort of funny. It's getting pretty dark. And yeah, I'm still wearing my sunglasses. Oh. See, it's I can almost barely I can barely see the bicycle computer now since it doesn't glow in the dark or anything. Got a mile and a half to go. I'm try to put my glasses back on. Cockeyed right now. Okay, there we go. I should probably stop and put my other glasses on, but I'm lazy. Or I'm stubborn. That's probably a better term to use. Cross another driveway here or road or whatever. Okay. Just listen to the nature here for a moment. And we'll be back here real soon. In a mile or so, I think. hear my bike vibrate. So this is a 400 lumen flashlight. I need to do a video on it. People keep asking me about it. It's a, uh, this flashlight is a Phoenix, F-E-N-I-X, uh, UC40, UE, UE is Ultimate Edition. It is a USB rechargeable flashlight. I generally run it in the second highest setting, which is 400 lumens. And the lumens is the amount of bright light at the center of the beam. And uh, different flashlights have a different spread pattern. This has a pretty good spread, and pretty good brightness. It has a maximum lumen capacity of 960, which seems a little brighter. It's, uh, it only lasts for like a minute or two though, because then it has to step back down before burning out. Step back down to the 400 lumens. So 960 or whatever is like this. Here we go. So that's 960. So that's pretty darn bright, as you can tell. I usually keep it at 400. There are two lower settings. I don't remember the, the settings. I don't like 100 lumen. Can't see anything almost. I'm like, I don't know, 200 lumen. Then 400 and 960. One, two, that's 400. So we're back on 400 lumen now. So that was a little demonstration of my flashlight out in the dark. In the, uh, where there isn't really any city light. Usually you're riding along a street though it has street lights and you don't need a really really bright light except for cars to see you. Car headlights are pretty darn bright. They're up upwards in that 960 range and they have two lights so they have a big spread pattern. A lot of brightness so you shouldn't feel too bad about having too bright of a light on your bike. Just don't point it in people's eyes. Point it forward and down slightly. And then you're good to go. <sighs> LED technology is amazing. I mean, it's made lights like this affo more affordable. They're still pretty expensive for the really bright stuff, but more affordable and uh, smaller. They don't weigh as much. The batteries are smaller. So yeah. Got to be almost back by now. It's See, I can't get my, take my sunglasses off again. I'm still wearing sunglasses. I think we got half a mile. 
All right, we're almost there, half a mile. Here in a train, somewhere to my right, across the cornfields or whatever. Half a mile through the, the woods here. Trail. Yeah, when I started it was a bit brighter, wasn't it? <laughs> and I was second guessing myself a little bit of whether I was going to do this today or not because I didn't want to really be riding in the dark for very long because uh, it's just getting later. Fortunately, though. also getting later uh, the uh, the time the daylight saving time happens so uh, it stays daylight a little later the sun doesn't set till about 7:30, but it's it's gotta be like eight o'clock now or something coming up on a bridge you can start to see some lights the town up ahead, the town of Tree Lord, Missouri. That's a quarter mile or less here now, I'm sure. Ugh. Thank you, GMC Denali bike. You've uh, held up for me again. Even though you aren't my favorite bike, you are reliable, and that's one of the most important qualities in any bicycle. <sighs> if I had to guess that that orange light up ahead, that's the parking lot. We made it. Back to true lore. Whew. Well, thanks for coming along with me on this ride. The ride with Bike Blogger to the Katy Trail, Tree Lord of McKendrick. This concludes our ride. So thanks for coming along. And uh, we'll see you guys next time.